You have what you believe is the most amazing thing you have ever done in Adobe Illustrator and you're ready to print it. But it's not really coming out like you thought it would. The opposite of je ne sais quoi. I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. What's the problem? Well, if you look and examine this document, we've got about three or four things that are just really wonderful when you're going to print. And I'm being sarcastic. We have gradient meshes. They're always difficult. This is actually a Photoshop document that is transparent, so I'm using transparency and blending modes on it. I've got some complicated text that I've converted into outlines. There's a lot of things in this document that are screaming, I need some help to print correctly. What we want to do is examine some of the little things that you can do, and some of these things are very simple, that will really help this document be as good as what you want it to be. And that's what this is all about, getting it to where you want it to be. It's your document. You decide quality. What do we do? Well, we could do it two ways, actually. I can come and select an object and go up to the word object on the pull-down menu and then go down to flatten transparency. But I would rather, if I had my druthers, I would rather do it in the print dialog box because I think you just have a little bit more control over the overall output. So let's do this. Come up to the word file, go down to print. Pretty easy. Go immediately into advanced. Forget these presets and go right into custom. In custom, the first thing is raster to vector balance. Illustrator likes to uncomplicate things for you when you go to print in ways that don't really affect quality, but affect how the document is assembled. If you have a 75% raster vector, what that means is when images get complex, Illustrator is going to start taking some of the complexity and turning it into raster pixels like Photoshop. That's not bad. Okay, that's not bad because it's really going to help the device like the press print it better. If we take vector all the way to 100%, that means it won't do it at all. It'll keep it vector if it's vector. No matter how complex it is, that could cause you printing problems. If you go all the way to zero to the left, it'll rasterize everything. Again, if you get these numbers correct, that probably won't impact the quality. Line art and text resolution is the next one, and that basically sets the output resolution for rasterized artwork and text resolution if you're rasterizing the text. So what does this do for us? 300 is a safe number. But if you look at the numbers that are here, you might go, well, wow, 288. That's pretty specific. This number is based on a line screen. All presses have a line screen, and the line screen of the press is best achieved visually on output if that number is a multiple of that line screen. Most presses have a line screen of 144, 288 is twice that number. A lot of press operators want one and a half to two times that number, they don't want any more. But if you get it precise, it's just one of those one more little tiny things that can help your document look better than somebody else's. You might want to get these numbers from your press operator. Incidentally, even inkjet and laser printers have a line screen. Go into the resource manual and figure out what it is. They're usually low in the 100, 120, something like that. Multiply that number by two and stick it in here. You just might see better output on your inkjet or laser printer. Same thing with this down here in terms of what it's going to do to complex gradient meshes. And we do have two of them in this document. Actually, 150 is pretty safe on most instances. However, I would check if I'm going to press with my press operator and don't just make the number up. Convert all text to outlines. If this box is not checked, only transparent portions of the text may be converted to outlines, and that may make the text thicker than other pieces of text. And with this option, it's going to make all your text consistent. Convert all strokes to outlines. If you have strokes that pass through different transparencies, you might want to choose this option to convert it to outline, and then that converts the stroke into a filled path, and it'll work with the transparencies. Click Complex Regions ensures that any differences in raster and vector objects always fall along the existing paths that have been created. This one can actually result in more complex clipping paths, and they may not print on some devices, but if you can use it, you should, because it makes your documents more accurate. Click OK to set that, and then click Print if you're going to print. If you click Done, it will set it without printing it. But I like those options, because sometimes when I'm working in Illustrator, just doesn't look as good as I think it can look. Those are the options you go to first to figure it out. 